Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Air Force has a massive fleet of over 5,200 aircraft that operate from almost 59 active duty bases around the country. And this is just a small part of the story. Sometimes, these aircraft extend their services to roughly 750 U.S. foreign military bases spread across 80 nations around the globe. But how does a fighter aircraft fly that far compared to the fuel it carries? Well, this is achieved by refueling the aircraft from the gas stations in the sky, otherwise known as tanker aircraft or aerial tankers. Aerial refueling is a skill-intensive process. And it begins with both the tanker and the receiver closing in on each other and maintaining a distance of 100 feet or less to overcome any disruption and turbulence mid-air. Before taking off, the tanker goes through some pre-flight checks. The crew verifies the status of the aircraft's fuel system by checking fuel levels and ensuring that the aircraft's refueling boom, fuel pumps, and valves are up to the mark. The pilot and co-pilot complete a series of checks to ensure that all systems, instruments, and controls are ready for takeoff. A tanker, like any other aircraft, take off in a traditional way. However, the takeoff distance and speed may vary due to its specific role and design. The tanker uses a rigid tube known as the boom to transfer the fuel to the receiving aircraft during in-flight operations. The boom is an extendable maneuverable pipe-like structure with a fuel nozzle. It is operated by the boom operator, who is responsible for transferring aviation fuel safely and effectively from one military aircraft to another. There are several possibilities for mishaps during in-flight refueling which requires the boom operator to make spontaneous decisions to overcome any problem that might occur. The boom operator constantly communicates with the pilot of the receiver aircraft to connect the boom to the receptacle. However, this process is not as easy as it sounds. This is because both the tanker and the receiver aircraft share a 30 to 50 feet boom while traveling at up to 580 miles per hour, and any irregularity in the atmosphere can make the planes roam around.
the boom operator has to anticipate the movement of the receiving aircraft and focus solely on the receptacle until the boom is connected to it. Uh, the boom operator will fly the boom into position as he's communicating with the receiver aircraft. And once we have them in uh, perfect position, we can extend the boom and insert the, um, the boom into the uh, receiver's receptacle. Once that contact is made, we can transfer the fuel from our aircraft into theirs. The boom is usually used to refuel larger aircraft, like the C-17. In contrast, smaller aircraft like fighter jets and helicopters are refueled using a probe and drogue system. During such an in-flight procedure, the tanker deploys a long hose with a funnel-shaped drogue to plug into the probe on the receiver aircraft. The pilots must maintain a particular speed during latching. Moving too quickly will puncture or break the hose, and moving too slowly will cause the probe to miss the drogue. Once the probe is connected to the drogue, the tanker's air crew releases the fuel to the receiving aircraft through the hose. When the receiving aircraft is refueled completely, the pilot retracts the probe and the aircraft resumes its mission. While the probe and drogue system is typically associated with fixed-wing aircraft, it can also be used for helicopters, like the HH-60G Cavehawk, which is a specialized search and rescue variant of the Sikorsky UH-60 Blackhawk. The HH-60G uses an extendable IFR, in-flight refueling probe, that needs to be plugged into the basket of the tanker's hose and drogue system. This is a challenging task, especially when you need to consider that the helicopter needs to fly near its maximum speed, whereas the tanker needs to fly as slow as it can to conduct in-flight refueling. Moreover, the wake turbulence can make the entire operation bumpy and dangerous because the helicopter's blades can momentarily get quite close to the hose. Aerial tankers undergo regular inspections before takeoff and after landing. The inspector analyzes everything from brake wear to moisture filters, as well as looks for signs of uneven wear or corrosion to structural components. Any discrepancies found are flagged on the inspection form with red ink. However, if no such discrepancies are found in the tanker, the form is marked with only the first initial of the inspector's last name and the signature of the production superintendent, both written in black ink. This suggests that the tanker is now categorized as the black letter aircraft, which rarely happens as it is almost impossible for these massive machines to fly twice without any minor or significant discrepancy. Everyone talks about how the pilots and the boomers operate aerial tankers, but no one really discusses what it takes to keep them in top condition. 
The maintenance crew thoroughly cleans the tanker's exterior to remove any dirt or debris that may accumulate during flights using water, detergents, and cleaning equipment. Additionally, the boom is washed to remove any residue or contaminants that might affect fuel flow during the next in-flight refueling. After cleaning the tanker, the maintenance crew inspects it for corrosion, carries out repairs, and replaces any part deemed unreliable during the inspection. The U.S. Air Force uses a technologically advanced parts fabrication machine extending the life of one of its oldest airframes, the KC-135 Strato tanker. The 3D imaging arm uses laser technology to capture highly accurate three-dimensional representations of the tanker's worn out parts. This not only saves an inexplicable amount of money, but man hours as well, reducing the inspection time from 15 hours to less than 20 minutes. The reverse engineering aspect of this device is also very crucial because several parts of the KC-135 are no longer in production. We are working on a 60-year-old airframe uh, that the boneyard, per se, is drying up of parts. The supply system no longer stocks the parts anymore. We don't have the manufacturers in the civilian market making much of the products anymore. So it's falling on us to be able to reverse engineer a lot of this stuff without any kind of drawing, technical data, blueprints, anything. The U.S. Air Force plans to revitalize its bomber fleet by replacing old tankers with almost 170 all-new KC-46 Pegasus. The KC-46 is equipped with a refueling boom driven by a fly-by-wire control system, along with a separate hose and drogue system that provides additional mission capabilities. The Pegasus is equipped with a warp system, which helps it to simultaneously refuel two aircraft at the same time, making it a force multiplier. The boom operator controls the boom, centerline drogue, and warps from an air refueling operator station, including panoramic displays that provide the ARO wingtip to wingtip situational awareness. All in all, the KC-46 is equipped with several distinct features making it more survivable in a contested environment. Although it is typically related to manned aircraft, the U.S. Air Force has also tested aerial refueling with some technologically advanced UAVs. In April 2015, an X-47B changed the course of aviation history by successfully conducting the first ever Autonomous Air Refueling, AAR. The tailless unmanned aircraft maneuvered behind a Boeing 707 tanker and took almost 4,000 pounds of fuel. This demonstration proved that UAVs are capable of performing standard missions like aerial refueling and operating seamlessly alongside a manned aircraft. With the advancement of UAVs, crew limitations no longer exist. On the other hand, aerial refueling systems are advancing rapidly. Someday in the future, 
we might see a pilot controlling an unmanned aerial tanker from an airbase on the ground, refueling fighter jets and helicopters in the air. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.